Tell me a little about uh, your professional career. Are you an educator? Yeah, I was a school teacher and school principal in New York City, the South Bronx. I retired and I came down here to Florida in 1991 and I started uh, my activism career for Israel and for the Jewish people and to try to educate them uh, into uh, what, it, uh, what, what they have to do in order to preserve Israel and their own heritage right here in this country. Were you a school teacher in the 60s and 70s? Oh yeah, I retired in 1988. And then I came down here in Florida in 1991, and I immediately started talking to large groups and uh, trying to convince them that they have to be stalwart Jews rather than stalwart Democrats. Now, how are Jewish interests different from uh, American interests? I mean, are, are they asking, are you asking people to act uh, not in an, a, a best American or, or, or Democrat interest? Well. Uh, the United States is only about 200 some odd years old, but when uh, the Jewish people are 2,500, 4,000 years old, and we've had persecution throughout. We've had 2,000 years in the diaspora. We came here to this country. Uh, we fought in all of the wars, World War II. Our kids came back from the war. They went to college. And now they have a right, just as any American citizen, to speak up uh, for their goals. Blacks have a right to speak up for black interests, and Jews have a right to speak up for Jewish interests. The Jews are rather reticent. They're uh, sort of embarrassed about their background and their heritage, and they're quiet, they're dormant. They have the attitude, basically, of the European Jew. You know, where they're suppressed, they can't speak out. I try to tell them, listen, you fought in our wars, You've contributed mightily to the success of this country, scientific developments, medical developments, the, the arts, the theater, books, what have you. Speak out. If you feel this way about your Jewish heritage, speak out. Is it uh, anti-Semitism that has forced uh, Jews to, uh, to try to have to prove their uh, patriotism and, and uh, loyalty to as, a good, as good Americans? Well, first of all, I don't use the term anti-Semitism. That's too generic and too broad. I use the term Jew-hating. No, it's not Jew-hating. I think there's very little Jew-hating in this country today. Years ago, we had Father Coughlin, we had the KKK, but now we have a new brand of Jew-hating. You have the black Jew-hating. We see it now shopping. and we see it in Jesse Jackson, Reverend Wright, Louis Farrakhan. And uh, we see it in the new Muslim community growing up in this country. Every single, well, not every single, 80 to 90 percent of the mosques are run by the North Atlantic Islamic Trust, which is funded by Saudi Arabia. This is a Jew-hating group. So I must assume that if I see a mosque and I see people going in, I must assume that that mosque is controlled by the North Atlantic Islamic Trust, which is owned and run by Saudi Arabia, and they are Jew-haters par excellence. And are they preaching, advocating uh, discrimination against the Jews? Oh, absolutely. You have CARE, the Council on American-Islamic Relations, which is a Muslim Brotherhood organization and Al-Qaeda group. They do. Well, what they've done, uh, they've become a little bit more sophisticated. Rather than saying, we don't like Jews, they twist it around and say, we don't like Israel. They've substituted their hatred for Israel for their hatred for Jews. Basically, How about Zionists? Not just Israel as a country, but supporters of Israel? Well, the supporters of Israel are Zionists. Jews should be Zionists, supporters of Israel, because this is their escape. Remember, although we've been in this country since its inception, I always feel I have the Jewish paranoia, which says I am basically just a visitor in this country, even though I fought for this country, I was in service. I feel, as the European Jews did, that they're just visitors in Poland and Hungary and uh, France and England. So uh, we have to fight for the preservation of Israel, because as Israel goes, so go the Jews in this country. And uh, as Israel goes towards the jihad, what, what would the, uh, the fall of uh, Israel into uh, Muslim hands signify to the global jihad? Well, it's, uh, if Israel falls, it signifies that uh, Muhammad was right, and that Allah is right, and Islam is right, that Jews don't deserve to live. It's written in the Quran, Jews don't deserve to live, and Christians. But if Israel goes, the United States is next. Let's be real about it. First the Sunday people, and then the Saturday people. Is that necessarily by war? Oh, I'm sorry, I apologize. First, First the, the Saturday, Saturday people, people, then the Sunday people. Uh, when you say the United States would go, would that be by uh, violent conquest? or? Well, you have a book, uh, Stealth Jihad, uh, today. You have to read that book, Stealth Jihad. And uh, it says... I'm sorry? Infiltration it's of American It's silent power? infiltration. Look at our schools today. Look at our universities today. They're run basically by the Muslim Student Association, by the Islamists. You have FAU, my alma mater, Brooklyn College, is gone. 
Harvard is holding a conference for Islamists. You have University of California at San Diego. You have Rutgers University, overt anti-Semitic, Jew-hating acts. Our country is next. Is the presence of Islam and Muslims, you think, antithetical to the safety of Jews in America? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, we had Nazis in World War II. During the 30s and 40s, we had the Nazis. They did not have a power in this country. They were not powerful in this country. The Muslims today are extremely powerful in this country. They're up to the White House. Listen, our president was born a Muslim, although he denies it. He was born a Muslim, and look at all of his friends, Rashid Khalidi. Uh, we have Indian PLO spokesman? Yeah, we have Louis Farrakhan, you have uh, Reverend Wright. These are people who accommodate the, the, the Muslims. And there's no doubt in my mind that Barack Obama inside uh, has a intense dislike for Jews. Whether it's his Islamic heritage, he was raised in uh, mm -hmm. Jakarta, Indonesia, under the Muslim school system. Or it's communist. Or communist. Listen, he was raised by Frank Marshall Davis, a pedophile communist. His mother abdicated and, and left him alone. She left. Mother and his grandmother and grandfather were loyal communists. And Frank Marshall Davis, a pedophile communist, had a, an, an, a, a tremendous role in raising Barack Obama. Who knows what he imparted in him then?